Hello and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Well, I have been doing a lot of flying around and collecting money from bounties and doing uh, exploration and doing courier runs and so on. So my Cobra is now quite nicely upgraded. Um, I've upgraded its power plant once, its power distributors a number of times. Now, I just figured I'd talk about these numbers here. Now, the number that's sort of in brown underneath, that's the, that's the maximum class size of the item you can put into the various um, equipment things. So you can see for bulkheads, I can put in a class 8 bulkhead. Um, buy and equip. This place is only selling class 1 stuff, but basically it means, you know, it's a big equipment space. That was class 4, and so on. Then the number in white, that's what I currently have equipped. So, um, so for example, sensors, I can take a class 3 sensor, and I currently have a class 3 sensor. Then the letter is the rating, that's how good the thing is. In general, a higher class is better than a lower class, even if the letter isn't as good. Um, a is better, G is not as good. So, when you buy a ship, it comes equipped with E-Class, um, not E-Class, E-Rating stuff. So you can see, I have been upgrading quite a bit my power plant, thrusters are at D, I haven't been able to afford a, um, a better frame shift drive, but I've upgraded life supports, power distributors gone, um, has gone to a, a, um, a B rating, I've upped my sensors, and so on and so forth. I've also upped my weapons a bit, so... These are gimbaled burst lasers. I was using gimbaled pulse lasers, but they're still only class 1, which is the largest size weapon I can have in these lower turrets, um, in these lower fixing points. But up here, you can see how much bigger that is compared to that. Uh, these are class 2 um, gimbaled pulse lasers, so they do more damage than, than, than a class 1 burst laser. Um, rating F, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Also a a bit better than those ones. Be interesting to know if there was a better rating of burst laser available. No, nope, I'll I'll have to keep keep checking. Um, got my kill warrant scanner, which is earning me lots of money. I did head to Empire Space. I believe I said I was going to um, either at the end of the last episode or in a Facebook post. And that was because with a kill warrant scanner, whenever I was killing stuff. I pick up bounties both for the system I'm in and for other systems. So as you can see there, I've got 8,000 in bounties in Alliance space. Now this bounty was only um, a particular faction in a particular system, so I haven't bothered to head back to pick that up yet. At the moment, um, well basically the game has been released. This is now the full release version of the game, which is excellent because it means that... Um, why are these headlines blank? <laughs> I was about to say that it means that the actual storyline has started running, but for some reason I'm not getting any Galnet news here. Um, I might have a bit of a server issue. But basically, the uh, race to secure su uh, succession in the Empire has taken hold. The Emperor has either died or is very old and ill, and there appear to be three people positioning themselves to, to take over the Imperial throne. Um, um, and they are each doing this in various ways. One of them has reduced the tax rate in his home system to 0% tax. He's essentially wanting to bribe um, all of the people with the money and the influence to support him in what's coming up. Another one is putting down a slave rebellion somewhere. Um, and basically is 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 paying people money to blow up the rebelling slaves, but I reckon there's also probably a faction there that is to help the slaves. Now, Imperial slavery, um, it's more like indentured servitude. It's not like you are out and out prop uh, property with no rights whatsoever. In fact, people will um, in the Empire will willingly sell themselves into slavery rather than go into debt, sort of you know, like a 10-year contract or something. But apparently these slaves that are rebelling in this system in the Empire aren't being treated properly. So I wanted to head in and find out what was going on there. 
but it's quite a ways away from where I am. Now, I'm hoping this thing will remember stuff I put in. No. Hmm. I did have a route plotted to where I wanted to head before. Now, I need to remember the name of this place with the slave rebellions. There we go. I've got the spelling right now. <laughs> so, Sorbago is currently 91 light years away, but I can plot a course to it because they've added this ability to the game now. So, let me get on the joystick. And this is the route I would have to fly. Which is a lot of stops along the way. Um, but I think it's worth it, because I'm not just going to make all of those jumps in one go and not really do anything else along the way. My plan is to jump from system to system. Anywhere there is a system which um, doesn't have any exploration data, or, you know, this the system view isn't known, I can do some planetary surveying. And for the other stuff, if I see a space station, I will actually stop off in it. Reason being, if you die, you respawn at the last station you docked at. So you don't want to do a 90 light year journey without stopping along the way. Um, other, you know, other interesting and useful things might, might pop up. Um, I did have a look at the bulletin board and there was nothing really interesting going on. Just so you guys know, I figured we'd take a look at the um, statistics and see, does it give me playtime? It's got my current asset, so I think that means my ship and everything on it is currently worth 940,000 credits, which is pretty good. I'd love to upgrade to an ASP. An ASP is designed as, a, um, um, as an explorer ship. It's got a very long jump range and enough hard and, and enough hard points that it can stand up for itself, but I think it has more equipment slots. Uh, bounties claimed, 90 bounties claimed, so you can see I've been blowing up people left and right. Um, not really any crimes going on. Um, not really much smug, uh, smuggling either. Most of that was um, someone had a mission to pick up black boxes and stuff, which is considered illegal. Um, yeah, okay, it doesn't have a playtime, which is a bit of a shame, really. It would be nice to know. Or flight time. Rather than playing time, it should be flight time. Um, my ranks. I'm still penniless on the trade rank, because I've never really worked out how to make money from trading. But uh, my combat and explorer ranks have both gone from harmless and aimless to mostly harmless and mostly aimless. Which is good. The best way to make money with the com uh, with the commodities market, I think, is to look for uh, rare goods. If you get a rare good and then take it about 100 light years away, you'll get the most money for it. But I haven't really ever found any rare, uh, rare goods for sale anywhere. So, enough of this. I've probably been talking a lot longer than I meant to. So, I'm going to launch. We'll head on out and I will start recording if and when something interesting happens. See, this is a very busy system. So, I'll see you out there. I'm at my first stop, and I figured I'd head for the nav beacon and see if there's anything of interest there. Now, I put a better fuel scoop in this thing. I think if you remember that I had one which I would cook myself, and I'd only get maybe 10 fuel per second. This thing, um, will, you know, gets me a lot more fuel, as you can see. So basically, a quick dive through the sun, and it always tops my tops my fuel off nicely. So I'm going to stop off at the um, at this nav beacon and see whether the, there is anyone wanted there. This is, you know, only the first stop on a long trip, but I may as well try and make money on the way if I can. I want to speed this up a bit. I've discovered that the best thing is to do is to keep the uh, time to destination between 7 and 8. Oh, I said that last episode, didn't I? <laughs> uh. Oh! That's an unidentified signal source. Those are always worth checking out. Uh, sometimes it's just a convoy of ships, but sometimes it's pirates. Sometimes it's cargo floating in space. Which, obviously, if you pick it up, will count as stolen, but if you head for the 
um, if you head for an outpost rather than a normal space station, then sometimes you can sell it. Of course, you have to know whether or not there's a um, black market um, in the place. They've made the transitions from um, Super Cruise down to normal space a lot more smooth than it was before. Um, it's basically less jerky. The game sort of appears to run a little better. So what have we got here? One ship, that means it's very likely to be a pirate. Scanning him. He's wanted. Let's deploy the warrant scanner. Get his attention. He's trying to run so I don't scan him. Ah, out of range. That's annoying. Oi, matey. Okay, he's definitely making a runner for it. I'm going to blast him a bit. Well, let's activate. I'm targeting his frameshift drive. Okay, let's see whether we can get another scan on him. Come on. And complete. Now free to blow him away. Right. I want to keep engines and weapons because he keeps trying to run and he's not really fighting back at all. Come on. Whoa, the graphics in this game are amazing. Oh, okay, he's just turned his frameshift drive on. That isn't good. Oh no, that's my... That that's my frame shift drive. Haha. <laughs> no reason to panic. Let's put even more power to the weapons. Seems he doesn't appear to be fighting back at all. 10,000 credits. Excellent. Now I've got to check which jurisdiction that's for. Um. Empire Bounty. Okay, because sometimes it's for a local faction, so you want to make sure you stop off when that's the case. So that, um, unident that unidentified signal source was well worth the stop. Let's um, get back to that nav beacon. Four, three, two, one, engage. I'm going to go to the nav beacon this time. So this is my tactic for bounty hunting, essentially, is um, I'm heading to places in space that might have some, uh, something interesting happening in them, or if I've got lots of bounties somewhere. And on the way, I do some surveying, if there is a new system, and I check out the unident unidentified signal sources and the nav beacon and look for pirates. And every, cu and every couple of systems, I um, dock to make sure that my progress along the route is saved. That guy circling around on me. If someone buzzes by and then circles around behind you, it's usually someone attempt attempting an interdiction, which means they're a pirate. <laughs> so I usually let them interdict me and kill them. Okay, anyone here? Type 6 transports, not usually pirates. Clean Imperial Clipper. Hmm. That's probably a bit too big for me to take out, but it's clean anyway. What about you? Come on, someone must be wanted by the police. Clean. I'm finding this is the case at these nav beacons now. They aren't the best place to find pirates. Python, nope. And everyone else I know. Now sometimes there's a ship sort of off in the distance a bit. 
Oh, okay, this guy has got his weapons out. See, he's, he's triangular on the radar. Come on. Oh, come on, lock on. Oh, okay, he's clean. <laughs> he had his weapons out for some reason. What about this guy? Now, when they're sort of yellow and flashy on the radar, it means it's too far away to get um, a lock without getting closer. He's also clean. Okay, nothing really of interest here at, at this nav beacon. There was no exploration to do in this system. So, I go down here, and that's the next stop on my um, plotted route. Lock destination and engage. Find my target, and I don't think the star will get in the way. Ah, now this is interesting. I stopped off at a unidentified signal source, and this guy is called Technology Acquisitions Inc. Now, what that means is that he's after some 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 stuff. Um, there we go. Looking for bulk components, willing to compensate accordingly. So, I'm not sure what he means by bulk components. Has he updated my transaction log? No. You don't want to give any more information? I mean, it might be that if I had some stolen good, some some stolen goods, possibly anything in the technology bracket, maybe, and I brought it here and, dump, and dumped it near him, he would pay me. What type of ship is he? I think that's an asp. So, they've added these little things, like I was doing a mission um, to, to deliver cargo somewhere, and I stopped off at an unexplored... Um, <laughs> big credits offered for the right tech. Um, I stopped off at um, an unidentified signal device, and someone there offered me more money to take my cargo somewhere else. So it's possible he's, um, he's here for a specific mission type. So, I was just heading for the nav beacon in this system in order to see if there's anything. We've got, us, we've got ourselves an adder who's wanted. So, we are going to deploy our scan. He's reacting to this. He's trying to get away. Scan complete. Try and take him down. Okay, he's got some some form of turret on there. Whoa, went a bit too quick. Let's turn head look on. I did upgrade my shield recently, so I'm hoping I can stand in this firefight a lot better than than he can. Though I'm gonna increase my recharge rate to my shields a bit because he's got a turret. Well, <laughs> hello. I wasn't after you. I'm after Mike Daly. Come on. No, it's my kill. Ah, someone else is going to get him. Come on, swing around. I sh I'm being too over generous with that. Oh, okay, I still got the bounty. Ooh, 13 grand, nice. Anyone else in the area? Cobra Mark III. Clean. Let's put my weapons away. Because you sort of scare, pe scare people running up to them with your weapons out. A 
looks like everyone else is clean, so let's just check which jurisdiction that bounty was for. Okay, so that's Federation, Alliance, and Empire. There we go. So there's one specifically for the LTT-1483 Union, which is the system I'm in. So I don't want to leave this system until I've claimed that bounty. So what I'll do is go to the system map, and I'm looking for a station that's belonging to that faction. Looks like this is the only station in the system, heading gate gateway. Uh, there's an outfitters there, so that's good. I can look to see if there's some some more equipment. So let's head there. It's unfortunately a little distance away. Yeah, so two, uh, two and a half thousand light seconds away is a reasonable distance. It's nothing like Alpha Centauri. For those of you who follow my Facebook page, you might already have spotted this, but I had a mission to go to Hutton Station on Alpha Centauri Proxima. So cool, because it's the closest star to um, our solar system. But you arrive at the main Alpha Centauri star, and then Hutton Station is 0.22 light years away. Yes, years, not light seconds, years. It took me about um, an hour and 20 minutes of real time to make the trip. And if I hadn't have been in, uh, been in a Cobra that had just fully refueled, I probably wouldn't even have made it. And as you can see, this trip is just a couple of minutes. So, <laughs> so this is nothing. Now, I was using a docking computer for a while, but in the end, I've ripped it out because it was using up power and it was occasionally not working properly. Unidentified signal source. Usually worth stopping off to see what it is. Um, I was finding that for um, those space stations that weren't the giant spinning ones, but the smaller ones, it was often failing to dock at those properly. And it did get me killed once. It basically loitered in a space station doorway for too long, and I came back from uh, from making a cup of tea to discover I had been blown to bits. So in general, docking is not that difficult, and the convenience of being able to you know go away and get a snack or stretch my legs not worth it. And the equipment space can be better used for something else. Who do we have? Eagles. Okay. Pirates? What do you carry, I wonder? He's a pirate. I carry your death, mate. He's wanted. Scan complete. He's an eagle. He's gone. His mate's gone, um, has gone hostile. Although he's clean, so I'm not sure why he's hostile towards me. Scan completes. Is he actually okay? No record. Okay, who else is out there? Sidewinder. He's also wanted. So let's perform a more detailed scan. And say goodnight, Gracie. Target destroyed. Uh, there's another sidewinder, he's probably also a pirate. So basically this was a cluster of pirates trying to take out that guy. And I'm here to rescue you! Let's go 
go a little quicker. Start my scan. Whoa! Uh, where is he? If I can get on him quick enough, the scan will will continue. Let's get his attention. There we go. So he's broken off his attack. No shields. That wasn't wise. Target destroyed. And the only guy left is the transporter who's clean. I'm not sure why he's showing hostile. I've not done anything to him. Right. Where were those bounties? So, you can see that the bounties in this st in, and station I was heading to has gone up. Um, but they were only wanted in this um, in this jurisdiction. That's what the kill warrant scanner does, is it finds other places that people might... Sorry, I've just noticed this guy's appeared. Other places where someone might be wanted. Someone's out there. Did not mean to do that meant to lock. Okay, someone's dropped canisters of polymers. If I pick them up, they'll count as stolen, and there probably won't even be a, um, probably won't even be a black, a black market where I'm going, so no real point. Navigation, heading gateway, lock and super cruise. Get on target, maximum thrust. So here we are at Heading ga Gateway, so all I've got to do is dock, claim my bounties, reset my um, spawn point, useful in case I die. I'm getting a little better at that. <laughs> Didn't want to say anything before I completed the manoeuvre. And I find that... Yeah, dropping your landing gear is a good idea because it slows you down. Landing gear deployed. Uh, there we go, six. So what I'll do is I will claim these bounties, and this will also reset my spawn, and then I will continue my uh, continue my trip to where the slave be uh, slave rebellion is happening, off camera probably. So maybe. I'm not promising this, but maybe next next episode we will be there and get in, and get involved in the slave rebellion. Um, it might be a bit dangerous, of course, because all the other players are probably doing a very similar thing. Engines disengaged. Enter hangar, starport services. It's always best to click enter hangar first because um, you have to enter it in order to take off anyway. See how much the um, fuel scoop is saving me. It's quite expensive to fill up the, the uh, fuel tank on a Cobra. Contacts. Local security office, 12 grand. Confirm. Oh, okay, there is a black, uh, there is a black market here, so... Had I managed to smuggle stuff in, I would have been able to sell it. But you never know, and that's the problem. Quick look here. Power couplings. During that last fight with these pulse lasers, I was finding that I really wasn't able to shoot continuously. So I really need need to think about upping my power distributors. I currently have, I forgot to check, I have a class B3. So that's an E3, so that would be worse. You can also just go down and look to see Okay, I'd have to go with that. This is what I've got. This is what I need. Which is good because it's lighter than the one I've got and it's the maximum rating possible. Eh, it'll do. I don't really want to put anything more powerful in. I'm wondering whether or not I should maybe... Hmm, the damage per second on a 
gimbaled pulse laser compared to the burst lasers probably isn't that bad. And it will draw less power. Yeah, the, okay, the power draw on my um, power plant is a lot less. The thermal load, which is what I think the um, power distributor deals with, is also less. And the damage per second, although it says it's less, is not that much less. So I'm thinking of actually, I'm, yeah, I'm going to switch back to gimbaled pulse lasers on this. Hopefully that should let me shoot in a more continuous manner. Oh, still only got the basic discovery scanner. Um, I haven't found anywhere that's had an intermediate discovery scanner within my price. And I also want a surface scanner to go with it. Basically use the discovery scanner to find the unknown astronomical objects. And then if you've got a surface scanner, you can get a lot more information on them, which is worth a lot more money. See, detailed surface scanner, though, is quarter of a million. And I haven't found an intermediate discovery scanner at all. Well, you know, I know they exist. Basically, they let you fuck... Uh, the one I've got only finds stuff within 500 light seconds. Um, the next one up is like a million or something. No, a thousand light seconds. Can I make any money selling maps? I can. Not much, but it's better than nothing. So, there we go. Oops, sorry, the head tracking is a little wobbly still. Basically, they're still working on the drivers for the version that I've got. And it seems to have this sort of continuous auto-correction thing, which is a little annoying. It's all like it's always dragging the point of view back towards the front. So, thank you for watching. Um, not A uh, little bit of bounty hunting done. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.